Hi, I'm Dr. Morales. I'm a board certified cardiologist as well as electrophysiologist and I've treated thousands of patients with atrial fibrillation. I've done countless numbers of cardioversion shocks as well as ablation procedures for atrial fibrillation. So that's what I'm going to discuss about in this video. I'm going to talk about cardioversion versus ablation. Which one do I choose? When do I choose certain ones? What, how do, what is my usual perspective on them? A lot of people ask questions about which one do they think is better and there's a lot of nuances about which one is best in your specific circumstances. But So I'm going to talk about how I approach it with my patients, when I decide a cardioversion is best versus when do I do it in ablations. Uh, sometimes I do both on the same patient. So I'll talk about that uh, in, this, in, this, in this video here. But always, up, what's best for you is always up between you and your doctor. But I hope this can give you some tips about what I do with my patients and what might be better for you in your circumstances. So first let's talk about cardioversions. What is a cardioversion first? A cardioversion is an electrical shock to your heart to reset your uh, heart rhythm to get you out of AFib and back into normal rhythm. Kind of like what you see in TV and the movies when they paddle somebody's chest, you know, and, it, and bring a person back to life. Same thing, but a lot less dramatic. It basically puts you to sleep for a few minutes, shock you uh, out of AFib, and see if, it, if you can get you out of AFib back into normal rhythm. Okay, relatively simple, straightforward the thing to do, although it sounds dramatic to say you get a shock to your heart. It's one of the simpler ways to get somebody out of atrial fibrillation. What is a catheter ablation procedure? An ablation procedure is a more aggressive option to get out of atrial fibrillation, and that's where I actually go into your groin, take catheters that go up to your heart, and make strategic burn marks in the left upper chamber of your heart, which is where most AFib comes from. Now, in general, an ablation procedure works better than a cardioversion does, but it's also a more aggressive procedure. And so you have to take in the pros and cons and the risks and benefits of both. And if you want to learn more about ablation procedures themselves and know a little bit more detail about what I do and what likely your electrophysiologist does during an ablation procedure, there'll be a link underneath this video for my uh, ablation video. Uh, so first of all, when do I choose cardioversion versus ablation? First, as far as a cardioversion goes, uh, cardioversions are only for people who are in what's called persistent atrial fibrillation, uh, meaning people who are uh, in atrial fibrillation all the time. If your AFib comes and goes and stops on its own, uh, cardioversion is not necessary. And so people who are in atrial fibrillation all the time, a cardioversion can be um, useful to get you out of AFib and back into normal, normal rhythm. Takes usually but a few minutes to do. Uh, I always do mine with an anesthesiologist so that you're completely asleep and you don't feel a thing when I try to shock someone's heart. And usually you go home within about an hour. So usually very simple, very straightforward thing to do. But the, the side effect, the, the downside, I guess, is that it may not work. It's le less aggressive than an ablation procedure. So there's a chance that it may not work. I may try to shock somebody and it just doesn't work. And you, the patient stays in, in atrial fibrillation afterwards. Okay, so that's sort of the downside of doing an, uh, a cardioversion. What about an ablation procedure? Now, the ablation procedure is a more extensive procedure. I'm actually going inside of people's hearts, making strategic burn marks. It tends to work much better than a cardioversion does, especially for long-term management, but it's more extensive procedure, which means that there are some more risks involved with the procedure as well. People may have uh, some shortness of breath afterwards, they may have chest pain. There's also some rare complications as well, like serious complications, risks of bleeding around the heart, risk of damaging the esophagus, which is right next to the heart, the area that gets ablated, uh, risk of damaging some of the nerves that controls your, your breathing, and also significant bleeding area your legs where I go in. Those major risks, fortunately, are pretty low. I mean, probably less than 1% of the major uh, major risks. But it is still a more significant procedure with more significant uh, recovery time than, than just a cardioversion. So what do I do? When do I suggest one versus another? Well, when somebody is in persistent atrial fibrillation, to be honest, I almost usually recommend the cardioversion as a first step, usually. Why is that? Cardioversion is a very simple thing to do. I usually describe it as short-term plans, long-term plans, okay? Short-term plans is the cardioversion. Get you out of AFib, get you feeling better, okay? A lot of times people who have a AFib, they're very short of breath, uh, they're feeling their heart racing, they just feel terrible. And the cardioversion is honestly the fastest thing that I can offer to somebody to get them feeling better as quickly as, po as possible. Uh, a cardioversion takes a very short amount of my time and, and usually you can schedule it very quickly. I can see a patient in the office and do a cardioversion within a few days uh, later uh, usually. And that's usually something that's, you know, 
very e easily done uh, in a lot of places across the United States where you can get a cardioversion scheduled fairly quickly and, and be a quick uh, relief of, of symptoms, okay? In addition, another time that I do cardioversions are when people are very symptomatic from their AFib, uh, when people are very short of breath from their AFib, um, or even if there's like they have what's called congestive heart failure, CHF, and their heart function is objectively weak because of atrial fibrillation, a cardioversion is a, almost a stabilizing thing. Right? Get their breathing better, get their heart function better, okay? And so that's almost, like I said, a short-term plan. You want to get your feeling better, and some of the more dangerous things like shortness of breath uh, or weakening the heart muscle, I want to start getting better as fast as, as possible, okay? And why do I say that? Well, you know, an ablation procedure, although it works better, is a more aggressive procedure. And so doing an ablation procedure when somebody is already very short of breath may make people feel more short of breath. Or they may have to stay in the hospital for a while because they're just still feeling very sick even after the procedure. But doing a cardioversion first, if somebody's a persistent AFib, you know, giving them a couple weeks in normal rhythm even, uh, can get their breathing better, gets their heart function better, gets their blood pressure better, and they're just more stable for an ablation procedure. Again, an ablation procedure are more of a long-term solution. Long-term solution to help prevent AFib from coming back down the road and something that can last potentially years to come. If you get tuned up properly before an ablation procedure, the risks of the ablation procedure go down. You're going to have less problems with shortness of breath. You're going to have less chest pain after the procedure. You're going to very likely be able to go home the same day of the procedure and have a faster recovery time. And so that tuning you up beforehand is what another thing a cardioversion can do. That's just why I very commonly do a cardioversion in all my patients who have persistent atrial fibrillation to kind of tune them up, get them feeling better. Um, and it can be a very good option for a lot of people. Um, and then a lot of times I will still do an ablation procedure afterwards uh, once they're kind of feeling better, they're not an AFib anymore, because long term that will work better than the cardioversion to prevent the AFib from coming back. Now there are times when the cardioversion doesn't work. I mean, I've tried shocking somebody, it does not work, they're still an AFib. Well, the next step up is to take a more aggressive step and go straight to the ablation while they're still in AFib. But at least at that point in time, I can counsel the patient and say, hey, we tried to get you out of AFib, didn't work, we're just we're gonna have to take with what your heart gave us, okay? And so we have to accept the fact that the risks of the ablation procedure are a little bit higher. You may have more shortness of breath afterwards. There's more of a chance that you may stay in the hospital after your ablation procedure because some fluid retention. And it's just the, the fact the matter of the way things go and the way the, the heart the, the way the heart decided it wanted to be. And so the, when the cardioversion does work, I can at least tell, counsel the patient better that the risk is gonna be slightly higher. But best case scenario, when people are having severe symptoms, they get the cardioversion done, they get to feel better, and the ablation can still be a very good option for long-term success, and they would feel better, and it's a smoother recovery and a lower risk procedure for them. And that's how I tend to use both cardioversions as well as ablations. Now, there are all times where I do a cardioversion and that's all I do on somebody. And that might be somebody who either has a preference to not do an ablation procedure because of risks. Maybe they are very, you know, very elderly, uh, or maybe they're concerned about the risk. Maybe they have significant lung disease or other medical health issues, which would make a more aggressive procedure more dangerous for them. So in that case, just a cardioversion by themselves with aggressive medical therapy to keep the AFib from coming back is a very good option. And I do that a lot for my patients who have significant other health risks where a more aggressive procedure like an ablation may not be a, a good option for them, okay? So that's sort of how I take into effect cardioversions versus an ablation procedure, why I choose one versus the other. Again, it comes down to short-term plans, long-term plans, okay? In general, the ablation procedure works better than anything else. In addition, whatever helps, whatever method you take to get out of atrial fibrillation, what really helps in the long term is lifestyle modifications, things such as weight loss, reducing processed foods, uh, reducing excess sodium, improving your blood pressure, improving diabetes. All of these things can help in the long term success rate for cardioversions or ablation procedures, which is why I created the Take Control of AFib program. Take Control of AFib program is my step by step plan on everything you need from a lifestyle wise that can improve AFib is all in one place so that you can get results as fast as possible. On the this video there's going to be a link to my program where you can learn more about the program itself you can learn what's included and you, as well as you can see testimonials from people who have actually taken the program and see what they have to say so check it out and see if that's something for you otherwise i wish you the best with your afib